Uh, for, first of all, I just want to say thank you for being here. We appreciate the support, the interest in our club. Uh, obviously, uh, we made the announcement last night uh, that we were moving on from Mike Matheny and Cal Eldred. Um, their decisions we never take lightly. Uh, there's a lot that goes into that. There's a lot of thought. Um, there's a lot of questions that are being asked. Uh, there's evaluations that need to take place on where we are as a team, <coughs> where we are as a team overall, and then also where we are uh, with individual players and their progress in their major league career. You know, based on those evaluations, we thought the time was right uh, to make that change, as difficult as it was. Uh, we respect those two men immensely. You know, Mike is a tremendous competitor. Uh, his preparation is outstanding. I do think the last three years have been challenging for a lot of reasons, you know, which matches the time that Mike was hired. You know, you got COVID in 2020, a lot of logistical things going on in 21. 22, we have the lockout. And when you add all that up, in addition to, I believe it was 29, uh, players who transitioned from the minor leagues to the major leagues, that's a big job. That's a tough job. And I, I want to acknowledge uh, the appreciation we have for him and how he handled it all. Never complained about a, a thing. Um, came to the ballpark every day to win the game, uh, which is really important. And I think that was one of the greatest qualities that Mike has. Um, and we want to wish him well with what he does in the future. A lot of the same can be said for Cal Eldred. Uh, Cal was determined uh, to help players get better, in particular pitchers. Uh, always had a smile on his face. There's a determination that he had. Asked a lot of questions himself. Um, and he had a deep care uh, for these players. Uh, and he knew what he was up against. I mean, coming into this year, it wasn't easy. I mean, to start the year, we had, I believe, three out of five of our starters uh, were not very experienced. Um, and then as the season went on, a majority of the time, it was four out of our five starters. And you know, there's, there's a lot that goes into that. And uh, we appreciate the way Cal handled everything. Uh, both of those guys are friends of ours. They'll continue to be friends of ours. And we want to wish them the best of luck in the future. And with all that said, I think, you know, from a front office perspective, this is an exciting time. I mean, this is when you make a decision like this, we're looking forward to the future. We're looking forward to what's next. We're looking forward to who can we put around our players to make our players better, to lead this organization in a way that's innovative, that's exciting, uh, that meets the needs of players, uh, meets the needs of our front office. And there's a lot of good people out there, and we're just looking forward to diving into it. So with that said, I'll take any questions. Okay. JJ, you talked about the evaluations that you went through. Um, these last couple of weeks as, as you've uh, transitioned into the, the lead of baseball, what did those evaluations look like and when did the decision, was, when was the decision made to move on? So M Mike and I had a lot of great discussions um, the last two weeks. Um, Mike understood uh, where we were. Um, you know, I don't want to speak for Mike, but it was very, it was very good. It was very open. It was very comforting to know that you had a, a person in place that understood what the game was about. And you know, we we didn't meet. You know, I'm going to try to avoid the word ex expectations. You know, as much as I can. But we did have some expectations. Um, so when you look at our record at the end of the season, you know something uh, went wrong. You know we we should have won more games than we did. Uh, there are a lot of factors that go into that. It's not just Mike himself. Uh, there's you know myself, our front office. Uh, you know we're all accountable for that. But we expected to be a little bit further along than we were, um, and we can't you know avoid that. That's the case. As you uh, look forward now into hiring a new manager, what, what are the qualities that you're looking for in, in that person? Well, it's we're, we're working on, I'll call it criteria, we're working on the criteria right now, but we certainly need somebody that's collaborative in nature, uh, recognizes all the departments that we have in place over the last five years. There's been a lot of efforts uh, to expand who we are and what we're about. Uh, whether that be performance science or research and development department uh, that has been in place, but it continues to grow. 
Um, behavioral science is a big part of what we do. Um, so those efforts that have been made over the last five years, this new manager is going to have to recognize that, appreciate it, and figure out a way to put it all into play. How do we put all, pull it all together? Uh, and that's, that's why it's going to take some time to find the right person. JJ, if you look at the criteria, what, what are the cases that you would make for already in the organization versus already, you know, put new, new fresh voices out of the organization? I mean, do you have to think that through in your matrix of stuff? Yeah, I, I think there's, there's some organizations that clearly are driven um, by multiple departments, like I'm speaking of. But what we have to be careful of is we don't overlook others. Um, there, there are people in every organization in baseball that are very talented. So we're going to cast a wide net uh, and narrow it down. And as we build out what we think are the most important uh, ingredients to being a manager for the Kansas City Royals, um, I couldn't tell you which organization it's going to come from. You know, that's that's kind of why this is uh, in some ways exciting right now. JJ, they. You know, you guys want to hire a manager. They have to want to come here too. What is, what, what's your selling point about this organization in the future? We've got a good core here. Um, we, we have a, we have work to do on our roster, but we've got a good core. I mean, if you look at our, our our rotation, they do have a little bit of experience now. Now, how that all shakes out in the long run, I would think that there's a manager out there and a pitching coach out there that are excited when they see what our. Um, our staff looks like and then of course uh, offensively our lineup is very young I think we started seven guys again yesterday that were rookies I mean so you know we don't know where all their careers are going but there's a core there that's pretty good and I would think will be very attractive uh, to a lot of people JJ, what, what's the current status I mean obviously you guys made this announcement with the pitching coach and manager the current staff the rest of them what's the current status right now yeah um, so the there a lot of the let me start with the people that will definitely stay in place um, will be our hitting department, uh, Alex Zumwalt, uh, Keone Duran, Mike Tozar, and Damon Hollins will remain as our first base coach. Uh, Pedro Grafol is a candidate for this job. Vance Wilson is a candidate for this job. Uh, so we'll see where that goes. And the way this is going to play out, the priority is to hire a manager first. The manager will have some influence and say in who the pitching coach is. And as you get those pieces in place, it'll determine the remainder of our staff. So that's that's the order of events for us. As you've talked about, you know, obviously you don't want to overlook other organizations and where you might find somebody. What sort of, I guess, value, if any, do you place on just the familiarity with so many young guys who just transitioned to the major leagues and there being some in-house people who have that familiarity? It's a benefit. Um, Quite honestly, it's a benefit I'm enjoying right now, or I'm the beneficiary of, because I, I know our organization well. Um, so there's there's reason to look at that and consider that. Um, our players have a great deal of respect, really, for every one of our coaches. Um, so I think they'd be excited if it ends up being one of our own guys. The transition may be a little bit quicker, um, but we're going to at least we're going to we're going to go through a thorough process. We're not going to jump into this and say this is our target. We don't have a main target, and I shared that uh, with Pedro and Vance, uh, which they appreciate. We're going to go through this process, and at the end of the day, we're going to make the best decision that we can make. Backtrack a little bit to Mike. Um, for you, was that more of a decision? Like you talked recently about your vision and how you guys are going to talk a lot about the vision going forward. Was this more of a decision based on the vision going forward or the results that you've already seen? I, th I think it's more on the evaluation of a reflection of the last three years and, and, and combined with what we want to do moving forward. Um, again, that's why that's why it's hard. There are a lot of really good things that, that Mike does. Um, you know, I have a, I've had a lot of players tell me how much they like playing for him, and that's a that's an important thing. Um, but I think when we reflect on the last three years, uh, the morale right now was was low coming off of a 97 loss season, um, and that's why you kind of piece it all together and you got to make a decision one way or the other. And obviously, we chose to to take a go on a new venture. JJ, what about somebody with the star power name? Not necessarily on somebody else's bench, like a Joe Madden, a guy who's been to World Series. Are you considering anybody who's got that type of championship experience that would excite the fan base as well as the players? We're, we're considering everybody. Um, I don't want to give a number of names we have down right now, but it's it's lengthy. <laughs> it's it's lengthy. 
You, you can't ignore uh, people who have had success in the past. There's a lot to be said for that. Uh, you can't ignore uh, information you have from other people in the game that will vouch for character, culture, those things that will continue to be important for, to us. Uh, you can't ignore people who didn't manage before. Uh, they're all, they all need to be considered. Otherwise, we wouldn't be doing this the way, we wouldn't be doing it properly if we just said, we're going after this type of guy, somebody who's managed before or somebody who hasn't managed before. So we're just going to consider them all. Names you've mentioned, they're certainly on the list. They've done it. They've done it at a high level. Uh, but then, you know, as we get down to this criteria, these four or five things we think are very important and we stick to that criteria, I don't know which side of the, the, the ball they may be on. It's going to take a while. It's going to take a while. There's a couple other positions that are open right now across baseball, so I know the, the, the time frames of those clubs may be a little bit quicker than ours, but this is going to be a good decision. And you don't make good decisions by just jumping in. So we're, we're going we're to take our time. We'll be efficient, but we're going to take our time to get the right person. Through the criteria, you've been here in this organization if you guys have gone through other managerial changes. How different do you anticipate your criteria will be than maybe it was three years ago? You know, well, I think this game continues to evolve, and the things that go into making decisions uh, at, at every level of our organization are, are very different, and every year they get a little more complex. Uh, that's why you have to surround yourself with good people to help you digest and kind of walk you through some things and, and make those uh, good decisions. But I do think the managerial position has changed. You know, you, you talk to players around the league, you talk to other executives, uh, you realize that there, there are things that teams are doing um, that are pretty advanced. Um, so that's our goal is to figure out what all of those things are and then implement it here. And, and, I, and I will say, I do believe we do a lot more uh, than maybe we, we are giving credit for. I will say that. Uh, we just don't talk about it a whole lot. So I think whoever we end up hiring in either position is going to be pleasantly surprised at the work that all of our departments do, and, and they'll, they'll be very happy and comfortable getting in that seat. Recognizing that giving one example doesn't encompass it all. Do you have an example when you mention some things other teams are doing that you'd like? Um, I'd rather not. I mean, it's. Uh, I want to be careful in what I say uh, because it's still there. There are things we we need to work through, um, but there, there and there really isn't a, a big example that or a good example I could give you. I think it, more than anything, it's how different minds, different areas of expertise come together and work together. Um, players want collaboration. They want to take part in their careers, and that's going to be an important criteria for our manager and our pitching coach. What about, you know, after they gather that information, after they talk to these cross departments and everything, in what aspects does that show up in the manager's decisions? Well, hopefully it just puts them in a better position to make good decisions. Uh, and the open-mindedness, uh, the curiosity the manager has, it'll help him make good decisions, and, and hopefully it leads to production on the field. Is this job harder than the one Ned just took, not only because of what's on the ground here, but because the game's changed? I think so. I think it's a little more complex. Um, you know, whether we want to get into data and technology, it's, I mean, it's far greater than it was in 2010, 2011. So I, I think the, the knowledge and the ability to take information and then make, make it actionable that's way different than it was uh, 10 years ago. So I do think it's a, it's a different landscape today. JJ, a couple um, questions. First off, the, the process of meeting with so many people, I know we saw you in, in Detroit, you came home and then, and then went back at the, for a few days in, in Cleveland too. How informative was that process for you in talking to, and I assume a lot of, a lot of people, a lot of players and coaches? That was, that was, um, that was very helpful. Um, they're really just end of, the, end of the year exit meetings that we had with really every player. Um, but you can read between the lines on things and you get a feeling of what, what players desire, how they want to participate in their careers. Um, and and it, it was very helpful. And then also just setting, like being very honest with guys. Here's where we are uh, as a team. Here's where you are as a player. 
And it's it's not about a coach that's going to make somebody a good player. It's about the coach and the player having a good relationship so they make progress to where they are making strides every day. And that really starts, I'm not going to say today for our guys, but in a couple of weeks they need to have a very clear vision of what they need to do in the off season. And that was a lot of what the meetings were about. And as we go through this process of hiring a manager and a pitching coach, they're going to have to get pretty active real quickly with our players to get to get. We don't want them to meet our players first time in spring training. Uh, they're going to need to get out and, and go see the see the see the guys, talk to the guys, go through whatever information we have. Uh, but I had more clarity after those meetings with all of our players and coaches and where we are, and um, you know led us to today. And in keeping Zumi and Keone and, and Mike and you mentioned David as well. How much, obviously, does that speak to the growth that they had second half of the year when they kind of came in, uh, so we did taking over? And how much does that help, too, in terms of stability with so many of those young hitters? Well, th that's that's an area right now that we're very comfortable in. in being very candid, we're, we're taking on a lot right now. To hire a manager and a pitching coach and support staff, that's going to be a very cumbersome task. Um, but because of the results that we've seen on, in the hitting department, we don't want to mess with that right now. That's something that's very stable. Uh, the relationship, relationships are built. Uh, there's a lot of trust uh, that our hitters have in that group. Um, so that, that's one thing we just kind of want to keep as is and not have to mess with, with that. Did you think there's any chance, like you mentioned, the Department of Hitting bringing those guys uh, on forward? Do you see that potentially happening in the pitching department as well? You mean as far as the, one, yeah, one. yeah. So so the way we were structured now, we had we had a pitching coach, we had a bullpen coach. We do have support staff working behind the scenes, um, doing advanced reports, uh, in game uh, action reports that were very impactful. Uh, so. Nobody really knows who those guys are, but there, it was a four-man effort. Um, I think when we do hire our pitching coach and we get the thoughts of our manager, we'll have a better idea of what the structure of the pitching side will look like, but I would suspect it looks very similar to our hitting. JJ, you mentioned that you know the results weren't there with Mike, so that's one of the reasons he's gone. Is the job for this next manager, is the charge going to be you've got to develop players, or is it more results-oriented? I think we have to have a healthy appreciation of where we are um, to go from where we are our record this year to flipping it to 90 wins next year. That's difficult. It's not impossible, but it's difficult. Um, so that's, you know, hearing from our candidates will give us a better idea of where they think we are uh, and maybe can help us set some loose expectations. But. I think we just need to focus on everybody reaching their ceiling and, and what they can do. Not all of our guys are three and four old hitters or leadoff hitters. Not all of our guys are starters. They may be relievers. Not all of them are number ones or twos. Um, that will continue to evolve. But our, our job is to get them to the point that they reach their ceiling. Uh, we know they can pitch in the major leagues. We know they can hit in the major leagues, but we have to help them reach their ceiling. So the focus on our, from our manager and from our pitching coach, it needs to be a little more process oriented. And I, I'm, I'm going to make a conscious effort to try not to talk about winning as much. What do we need to do to win? Uh, and, and that's where these hires are very important. In your mind, when, you, when you talked about the hitting department, um, is, where does Mabry fall on that? Uh, John's one. Of, we'll see where it goes. John, that, that decision will be made on him uh, down the road. John's a very talented person. He sees the game through a different lens, a lot of experience, uh, and I enjoy speaking the game with John. So that will be determined down the road. Same for LC. Yes. Yep. When you look at the game today, the way the way it is, the way it's structured, what's the most important thing for a manager? I've heard guys, including Ned, say, look, when you're in Atlanta, you sign up, you, you put those names on the lineup of <laughs> pitchers, and you can ride it. But what, at a job like this, what's the most important thing you find? It, it's communication. It, it really is. It's um, knowing the heartbeat of the player, knowing what's going on, uh, not only on the field, but anything that might be going off the field. Uh, it, it really is just communication and, and an openness uh, where players feel comfortable. Um, even players from 10 years ago to now are different. 
So, uh, you know, socially, culturally, they're very different. Uh, so connecting with people, just like all of us like to connect with our bosses, that's really important. That's probably the greatest influence on how well a manager will do. I, I don't think a, you know, when, when it comes to game decisions, I don't know how many game decisions are made that really impact a, a, a win or a loss. There's certainly some. And I think it's more in decisions that are made with pitching than it is whether you hit and run or bunt or do any of that. It's a, it, you know, it has a place, and there are results that are affected by that. Um, but having guys um, enjoy playing the game, knowing the coaches have their back, and there's a true uh, a trust there, uh, is a big factor in, in a player becoming what he can become. JJ, I know I'm still a month away from the uh, free agency and all that, but just the balance of the two going through all this and then preparing for that, does one need to be done before the other begins? Well, we're going to have to do both. Um, you know, we do have a month here before free agency starts, so we'll be in Arizona next week meeting with our pro staff, uh, talking about our team. Uh, you know, I have my ideas of what we need to do to, to improve our roster. Um, but I don't want to share them until I talk to everybody else. You know, sometimes you're just a little too close to it. So I want to hear what our, our pro scouts, uh, some of our development guys, I want to hear what they have to say. And hopefully we're, we're somewhat close and then we can move forward. Um, so we'll, we'll certainly have an eye on that. So when the free agency season opens, we're prepared. Uh, but the month of October will be focused mainly on our, our coaching staff. You mentioned that uh, you thought you, you, your organization didn't get a, a, enough credit or as much credit as for some of the things in the advancements of the game that you're doing. But do you still feel like you're playing catch up in that regard? Uh, I think we can always improve. I, I, I think we're more advanced, and again, than people realize we are. Um, you know, one of the things that I hope people realize every decision that we make um, is reflective of an opinion uh, of a scout uh, because the scouts grades are data points uh, that help our an analytic team put together whether it's prospect scores uh, rankings that we have they're all connected um, we can always improve I mean I, I don't think that'll ever change uh, it's hard for me to say where we rank in baseball because I don't know exactly what everybody does but we'll strive to continue to improve and make that uh, more of our process than we have in the past You've talked. We've talked a lot about development, and you mentioned the free agencies coming up. W would it not help to just spend more money, too, in addition to all the other things that you want to do to get the team back to where you want to go? Yeah, you know, John and I have had this discussion, and John is willing to do uh, what we need to do at the appropriate time. You know, I think coming off of, of, of a season like we've just come off, it may not be the right time to do that, but there's, there's a willingness and an openness. Uh, I think what we need to focus on is more infrastructure and how we build out the infrastructure. And when the time's right, you know, we'll do what we have to do. Uh, I, you know, there are a lot of teams that have high payrolls that aren't playing tomorrow. So I don't think that's the only way to win ball games. I think making good decisions along the way is as impactful as having a high payroll. So it's something that we don't get too concerned with. Hey. Hey, where do you view the, uh, do you view additions to the front office being, being made this offseason as well in addition to I really like our front office. They're a talented group. We've worked together for a number of years, but we've added people here recently that, that push us to think differently. And we enjoy that. So I think our, our front office is healthy. Um, you know, I mentioned earlier the intellectual curiosity. We have people that spark that for us. Um, so I like our front office. It's not to say we won't have any changes or addition. I would say at this point it might be an addition, not a change. Um, I think it's more uh, getting settled in with our front office and casting a vision uh, that I have in mind, so we're all on the same page, even though we've worked together. There's certainly some things that I think we need to address and then look at each department and any changes we need to make uh, in those departments. You feel like you have the right people in place. I do. I do, yeah. JJ, um, the, the exit interviews that you had, what, feed, I guess, how, what role did the feedback you got from players playing these decisions that you've made? It, you listen and you want to pick up on uh, – 
thoughts and ideas and get some perspective of where they are. They're 25 years old, most of them, so you want to get that perspective. Uh, but it was separate from making the decision that we made. Um, before we even had the exit interviews, uh, Scott Sharp, myself, and others uh, met in Detroit. We talked about a lot of things, and essentially the decision had been made when we left Detroit, Detroit and then the exit interview started after that. And then as far as just the, the position you guys are at with the Major League roster, how would you compare that to just even when Mike took over three years ago? I mean, um, you talked about all the different transitioning and everything. Yeah. Where would you put it compared to that? Well, it's, it's, it's less experienced, and there's no doubt. I mean, when we went forward a little bit, uh, when we signed Carlos and Mike Miner, you know, we thought we had Ben Attendi. We thought we had a group that can, can compete in the Central. Uh, now I think it's going to take some time to grow into uh, a team that's going to compete at the top of the Central year in and year out. So the, the makeup of the roster is, is very different. Go ahead, Sam. Um, follow up on something he asked about front office. Um, you had mentioned when we first chatted with you in the dugout a couple of weeks ago about hiring somebody to potentially oversee some pitching. I'm just wondering if that's still planned for you. So depending again, it depends on who our pitching coach is. Um, you know, one thing that I, I will share is I don't think it's healthy to have somebody in the major leagues that's trying to oversee all the minor leagues because the day-to-day -day operations here, the preparation that goes into trying to win a ball game, it, it's time-consuming. Uh, so we don't envision having somebody as a pitching coach that's going to oversee the minor leagues. Um, Paul Gibson's our senior director of pitching. He will continue in that role. We're going to look to build out around him. Uh, Paul will be a part of the process to help us hire a pitching coach here, and hopefully that relationship is a good one. Uh, it will be. <laughs> Let me say that it will be. It needs to be. Um, but Paul is really important in what we're doing, and he's great field for the minor leagues. And, you know, the things that he's been able to do since 2018, uh, I think, are not um, – recognized enough we've graduated a lot of guys to the major leagues they've gotten through the minor leagues that's paul's job so he's done that well um, but we do need to surround him with some people that can help further our efforts in pitching so that's where there may be some expansion on the minor league side and then, um, you mentioned the internal candidates with vance and Pat. i just wanted to clarify are those the only two guys in the organization yes that you consider internal candidates? yes a couple quick ones. so it sounds like People over here in your front office now are, are staying. Yes. And then on the analytics and data, the buzzwords of the day, you mentioned you've got some new guys who challenge you guys with some new thinking and ideas. Where along your timeline you know, as a baseball front office guy did something click for you or you get one over? or? Yeah, I don't want to sing, single people out, uh, but certainly the behavioral science side, uh, Ryan made when he came on. Uh, Daniel Mack has been a great influence. Uh, we also, prior to Daniel Mack, you know, Mike Grubman was here. There were others. Um, but when it really started to click for me was the fall of 2018 when we went to Instructional League. And we were all together, and we were able to collaborate as a group. And I was able to uh, understand how we could help players differently uh, rather than just in the weight room or on the mounds or in the batting cages, uh, started to understand uh, that our players want to be taught differently. Um, they're coming from major universities with a lot of labs that are out there, and you know they think of body movements where 10 years ago it was just, how's my swing look? Well, now it's how, how's my body moving? Well, I, I can't talk about that. I don't, I don't, it's not my expertise. Um, so the addition of Drew Saylor on the hitting side was very impactful. Uh, Austin Driggers from performance science side. Uh, and when you put all those guys together, there was, I keep saying it, there was a collaboration that there was actionable change, particularly uh, in the hitting department. And then on the pitching side, you know, we slowly started to get there, but guys are getting it. The other thing, though, on the pitching side is those pitchers are moving fast through our system. 
you know, when you really break down uh, the track record of a, uh, you know, Carlos Fernandez, it was Lexington to the big leagues because of the pandemic. You know, and there's others. I don't want to list them all. Uh, so those steps that the hitters got to go through, the pitchers really didn't. Um, so that's why I'm confident in, in what we're doing in, on the pitching side in the minor leagues. Um, but to answer your question, my eyes were open in 2018 when we were in instructional league for six or seven weeks, and it was just different type of discussion than I had ever been a part of before. You mentioned that uh, you had expectations going into the season and you wanted to get away from using the word expectation. Yeah. Then you lost 97 games. I think you somewhat touched on this. So you, do you feel like the team now is more in a place of a 97 loss team than the team you had expectations for at the outset of this season? I, I don't think we achieved this year the way we should have. Um, so I, I, I don't you know, I don't know what the number is, but I think if we were somewhere closer to 500 this year uh, or at 500, that would have been a, a reasonable uh, number to, to, to get to. Um, a lot of different reasons. I look back on some decisions that I made that I can't help but to wonder if, you know, th is that why we didn't get off to a good start? You know, again, we're all accountable for this. Uh, but I think reasonably when we look at our team and we look at, you know, I do this every night. I look at the lineups. I look at our team, how many guys are homegrown, how many guys have experience. We're, we're running seven guys out a night. And then I look at the other team, and it's more veteran-laden. We just have to get that ex more experience. But when I, when I look at those lineups, I feel good about our lineup. You know, I feel like we're going to be able to score runs. I feel like we're going to be able to put the ball in play. We can run the base as well. Um, and then you get on the pitching side. And that, that's where I think the, the biggest difference, you know, uh, I won't say who it was, but somebody made a really good point to me. Most of the playoff teams have three or four guys who have more than six or seven years of experience uh, as a starting pitcher. So every night or every five days, more the opposite of that. So we have to get there. Uh, we also have to be good in our evaluations of how ready is a pitcher uh, to be a consistent starter in the major leagues, or is the role a little bit different? Should he be in the bullpen? So I got a little off topic there, but um, I, I don't think we reached what we could have reached uh, based on the talent we have in our, in, on our roster. Yeah. Will this be the biggest decision you make in the foreseeable future, or is that just a fan looking at it because we see the manager, hear the manager every day? It, it's a huge decision. I, I don't know if there's a more important hire than hiring a manager. Uh, they control the temperature in the clubhouse. You know, they, you know, we like to say, and Scott Sharp reminds me all the time. You know, if you're a good team. If you're a really good team, you lose 62 times a year. If you're a good team, you lose 72 times a year. And I, I don't know if anybody got in with 90 wins, but that's a lot of nights going home not feeling good. Um, so the guy that can control the, the clubhouse and you know keep the, the positivity going, uh, keep the environment uh, at the, 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 its peak uh, is, is a pretty important hire. More important than me, more important than anybody else we have because he's going to influence the 26 guys that we need to play at their best every night. Bye. JJ, you're probably presiding over the biggest changes in this organization in decades, really, and, and I, I'm just curious how much that you feel that and you, you, you sense this moment. I, I don't know what that's like to manage something like that. It's still it's settling in. You know, I, I, I've had, fortunately, uh, I've had opportunity to think about these things with prior opportunities that didn't come to fruition. So you sort of put yourself in this space from time to time. You can't get consumed with it. Um, but every day, I, I, something hits me like, oh, yeah, we got to deal with that, too. We got to deal with that, too. Um, but I'm excited about it. I mean, it's. Um, I think it's going to be fun. I, like I said, I like the people I work with. I like how they challenge me. Um, but there's a lot, as you said, to preside over. And part of the part of the, I'm sure, challenge of it is, and you've you've had to make decisions, tough decisions about people you have relationships with. I, I, you had to gird yourself for that, I assume, coming into the job. I, can you just take us through what that process is like when you have those kind of feelings for people? Yeah, um, the way I've tried to look at it is, um, I hope this comes out right, if I had been hired to work for another team, how would I evaluate what we're doing? And I think that gives me clarity uh, in, in approaching a decision, talking about a decision. Um, 
because that's what you would do if you'd come from another organization. Uh, so that that's how I'm trying to approach it. How much, how much will just the youth of the roster that you mentioned a few times, how much will that factor into well, they got to be able to connect with them. So yeah, it'll be a big factor. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know what the background of the person's going to be. Um, you get, you have these loose ideas, but that'll be a huge factor. And your feedback from players, did you get a sense that your clubhouse was tense or that anything? Like that? No, you know, yes, in some ways, but nowhere it's problematic. You know, I think everybody appreciated. You know, Mike is a competitor. You know, and he wants to win. And I've had I've had some players say, "I'm glad Mike gets on me." You know, so there's a there's a respect that's there. So I don't think it was problematic. I don't think it's why we didn't win more. Um, I think it's just observational. I was kind of going along that line of was there a problem between players and Mike? There wasn't. There wasn't. Mike, Mike's a pro. I mean, I, I, you know, the best conversations I had with Mike Matheny were the toughest conversations. And those players that were willing to go in and have the conversation with him, they got the same feeling. So I, I don't think that's an issue at all. Um, I, I respect Mike, and I appreciated, you know, a lot of not only advice in baseball, but personally. You know, he's, he's, he's approachable, you know, and, and he, the tough conversation Mike welcomes, welcomes and that, that's what I think makes him different as a leader, and it's something that I think players who got to that level uh, with that type of re relationship with him saw the same thing. Cool. Thanks, guys. JJ, thank you. Yep.